Hello gorgeous peeps, I'm Chris from Techspert and today we're reviewing Sony's DualSense Edge PlayStation 5 controller, an uber posh souped up version of the original DualSense controller with an emphasis on personalization and performance. That's according to Sony's own marketing gaff. It's available to buy right now from Sony and the usual shops, but I hope you're wearing some pretty sturdy underwear as I divulge the price. An eye-watering, hernia-inducing £209.99. That's over three times the cost of one of the original DualSense PlayStation 5 controllers. Heck, it's not far off half the price of an actual PlayStation 5 console. But what's actually the difference and is it worth that sky-high price? Well, here's my full unboxing and review of the DualSense Edge. And for more on the latest and greatest tech, please do poke subscribe and ding that notifications bell. Cheers! So first up, what do you actually get in the box for your 210 pund? Well, for a start, you get the worst sticker I've ever had to deal with. This thing just <laughs> does not want to come off. Right, here we go. So the DualSense Edge controller and all of the accessories come bundled in a hard shell carry case. Definitely handy if you're going to be taking your expensive new investment around to a mate's house. This looks pretty ruddy smart, feels solidly constructed in all areas and as you can see there's plenty of space inside for not just the controller but also all the braided USB cable and all the various accessories. I also love the zips with the little PlayStation logo on it as well, nice little nerdy touch. And inside the case you've got one DualSense Edge controller, one braided USB cable type A to type C. You've got a mechanism to lock the cable in place and lots of bits for customising that DualSense Edge controller. As you can see, you've got three different pairs of thumbsticks which can be chucked onto the DualSense Edge. These include indented thumbsticks, and you've also got two pairs of rounded thumbsticks at different heights, short and tall. And these bad boys are the fresh new back buttons which poke into these little orifices around the arse end of the DualSense Edge. So you've got a choice of half dome, or otherwise if you'd prefer full-on levers. And yes, you do actually get an instruction manual bundled in that box as well. Definitely quite handy for learning about all of the new features of the DualSense Edge because it's quite different from the standard controller in many ways. Now stick the DualSense Edge controller side by side with the original DualSense. You see the aesthetics haven't changed up radically. In fact, the size and shape hasn't really changed up at all, which I'm very pleased about because the original DualSense is super comfortable to wield for hours at a time, as is the Edge. You do have some basic aesthetical changes, such as, for instance, the D-pad and the face buttons are now black rather than clear. And also the central touchpad is now black with a bit of PlayStation iconography. And for some reason, I'm not really sure why, Sony has gone and made the central section of the DualSense Edge glossy now, which means that if you do accidentally finger it in that area, it gets all greasy and grimy and nasty. Kind of wish they hadn't done that. And if we flip the DualSense Edge over, a few changes to the arse end as well. So now you've got slip resistant inner grips and you've also got slightly more grippy triggers as well for when your hands get all moist from hours of sweaty fumbling, so to speak. But of course the biggest design changes are the customizable bits. So these thumbsticks for instance, super easy to pop off and then replace with a new set. Literally just yank off the old ones, slap on the new ones, takes a few seconds at most. And it feels like a reassuringly robust design as well. I've only been testing the DualSense Edge for a few days now, but I've tried being really heavy handed with these things, really yanking them off, shoving them back on there as hard and as forcefully as I can. So far, no damage, touch wood. And likewise, those thumbsticks haven't popped right off during frantic button mashing sessions or anything either. So yeah, so far so good. But unfortunately, Sony hasn't used Hall Effect sensors for the thumbsticks in this model. It is once again just analog, which is a bit of a shame considering that sky high asking price. Another customizable bit of the DualSense Edge is the trigger length. So by default, they work exactly the same as the standard DualSense, but you do now have two separate stages. It's easy to change this on the fly, especially if you just want the trigger set to the shortest length. And I found this is especially good for button mashing games like God of War. And then my personal favorite, the mappable back buttons, which are brand new. You got two types of back button bundled with the DualSense Edge, which I've lovingly nicknamed Dongs and Nips because I'm amazingly clever like that and super mature, obviously. Personally, I'm more of a Nips fan because when an enemy jumps out at me and tries to bash my bloody face in and startles me, I find I'm accidentally hitting those Dongs, whereas the Nips just rest there underneath my fingers and I can just give them a quick little nudge when I need to. And these back buttons, much like the thumbsticks, are super easy to swap in and out. And you do only get the two different varieties at the moment, but hopefully that will be expanded in the future. Now, when you first connect your DualSense Edge to your PlayStation 5, a nifty little interactive guide will pop up on screen in case you couldn't actually be bothered to read that manual. And that'll just run you through the main features. 
But one of the biggest new features of the DualSense Edge is the ability to set up individual profiles either for your different games or even for different characters within a game. You can access the new profile menu at any point simply by holding down one of the two function buttons at the bottom of the DualSense Edge. And as you can see there, this allows you to quickly skip in-game between three of your customised profiles and the original default profile. And that makes it really easy if you're using multiple characters in a game to swap between them without fannying around going into proper full-on menus. You can apparently create up to 30 of these customised profiles in total. I've just done a handful so far. This is my Kratos one for God of War. The first option in the profiles menu is to customise the button assignments. This basically means you can replace any button assignment with another. So if a game won't actually let you change up the controls inside the settings menu, you can just do it yourself. Make the triangle button, the circle button, or whatever you fancy doing. You can also completely disable a button if you decide you don't want it to do anything, and you can customise the likes of the touchpad, even the actual PlayStation button, and of course those back buttons. So as with the rest of the controller buttons, you can basically set those back buttons to whichever other button you like. My favourite part of the profiles though is the ability to adjust the stick sensitivity slash dead zone. And you can do this for both the left stick and the right stick. What you do is you select a sensitivity curve, so you've got the default one which is just a straight line, and then various other presets including quick, which really boosts the sensitivity of the thumbstick. You've also got precise which does the opposite. Definitely handy if for instance you're playing as a sniper and you want to get those headshots in. And then you've got variations within. For Kratos, I actually prefer Precise because I like to throw his axe and it can be quite easy to miss. And once you've selected which mode you would like, you can then make very subtle little adjustments to the curve and to the actual dead zone of the thumbstick as well. You'll be able to see what effect your adjustments are having on the controller diagram there on the right. And to actually test out your adjustments, you can actually jump straight back into the game and then see what effect they've had. Decide whether you're a fan or not, and then just jump straight back into the settings and tweak them again if you're not entirely satisfied. And personally, I find that the profiles is easily the best reason to get yourself a DualSense Edge, and I did find it a bit of a game changer as well, making that right thumbstick slightly less sensitive in games where you have to carefully aim rather than just sprinting around like your tint on fire madly blasting away. Definitely a massive improvement. And as for the haptics, you can expect a pretty decent rumble from this bad boy as well. Again, you can actually customise that in the profiles, tweaking not only the vibration intensity, which is satisfyingly set to strong by default, but also that trigger effect intensity. And on that strong default setting, you get a proper good rumble from this thing as well. If you put the DualSense Edge down on your sofa before a particularly violent cutscene happens, it'll be across the room in about five seconds. However, one problem with the DualSense Edge controller, other than the fact that it costs almost as much as a Nintendo Switch, is the fact that the battery life isn't fantastic on it. I've only been testing out again for a few days, but I found I generally get around four hours of full-on use from a full charge. Now, hopefully that's something that will improve over time, especially bearing in mind the fact that I've been using it pre-release, so it's going to no doubt receive some of the updates soon. But yeah, at least Sony has bundled a cable of decent length with the DualSense Edge so you can plug it in when it does finally die. It is braided as well so it doesn't get too badly tangled or anything. And you do have that locking mechanism for preventing the cable from being yanked out violently mid-game, although I do then slightly worry that it just means the PlayStation is going to end up being pulled right off the bloody table instead. So there you have it. That in a nutshell, my lovelies, is the PlayStation 5 DualSense Edge controller. And it is just for the PlayStation 5, by the way. Don't get one if you've got a PlayStation 4 or whatever, because it is not compatible. And I have enjoyed using it. Certainly it has helped my game, that's for sure. And my game did need some help, because I'm an old arthritic twat these days. And the only thing that really keeps me from wholeheartedly recommending this thing, besides the fact that battery life ain't fantastic, is of course that asking price. It is so, so expensive. And there are, of course, alternative pro options out there if you are trying to get into eSports or something like that with the, the multiple back buttons and the customization. But the profile setup and everything was absolutely fantastic to use, very streamlined, very simple to learn and to get on with. And frankly, if money is no object, then yeah, go for it. So that's the DualSense Edge. Please let me know what you think down in the comments below. Pog subscribe and ding that notifications bell for more on the latest and greatest tech. And have yourselves a wonderful rest of the week. Cheers, everyone. Love you.